Hi everybody and welcome back to You Are Supreme Toys. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review of the second wave of Defenders of the Earth action figures. We have Mandrake the Magician, Garax, and Lothar. These were manufactured by the nice people at NECA Toys and these are all part of King Features lineup of superheroes. Now King Features has been in the business for a very long time, over a hundred years, and it's am it's amazing that they're they're still going. Like I don't know how significant an impact they have on today's market because the competition is outstanding. But the fact that these heroes and villains have stood the test of time, and here in 2023, they have action figures. Now. I didn't know a lot of the backstory um, for Lothar before I did this video. I knew Mandrake had been around for a long time, but I wasn't exactly sure. So I looked up some information to get a preface on the backstory on these guys. Mandrake the Magician, good old fella here, actually predates most of the superheroes that you would know. Now, you could argue whether or not he is technically a superhero. I believe the term superhero is kind of open-ended these days. Um, what makes a superhero? Is it a masked vigilante? Uh, a guy with superpowers? An alien with super strength? A superhuman intelligent person or being? A god? <laughs> if we're going to play by those rules, we could go back thousands and thousands of years to the first superhero. But, for the purpose of this video, we'll just consider the superheroes of the previous century to today. Because they're the superheroes most of us are familiar with, even today. I mean, Mandrake here was created in 1934 in a comic strip and I believe it was a newspaper so he was in mid around mid 1934 and Lothar here I was certain was his own character at some point but fact of the matter is Lothar began his life as Mandrake the Magician's sidekick now there hasn't been a lot done with Lothar since the 80s um, I, I believe the 80s was like really when they revamped his character for the better because originally he was a very stereotypical uh, somewhat racist character <laughs> I guess you could say but in the Defenders of the Earth cartoon and probably earlier than that but they, they definitely gave him his due I believe Lothar is 1934 too. Just to give you an idea of the times here, Flash Gordon was first, 1934 around January. Then mid middle around the middle of the year, Mandrake the Magician comes along, followed by his sidekick Lothar. Two years later, we get the Phantom in 1936. Two years after that, in 1938 and then 1939, we get Superman, followed by Batman. So these guys are just a little bit older than our two most notorious superheroes that everyone on the planet is familiar with. Just to give you an idea, the Spider-Man didn't come out for another 30 years. <laughs> most of the Marvel characters did not come out for another 30 years. Um... Captain America was 1941. Namor was 1939, and I believe he's credited as the first technically Marvel superhero, even though him and, him and Captain America were kind of like sucked into Marvel Comics at, at some point when it was refounded as Marvel Comics. I was uncertain about Garrix because I specifically remember him only from the Defenders of the Earth cartoon. Um, and as far as I can, can find, he originated from the animated series. So he is an animated character specifically. 
Um, that's why he his action figure really is very animated looking, as opposed to the other figures in the Defenders line, which are super detailed, super hyper detailed. Um, I'm actually surprised that NECA did the super hyper detailed versions as opposed to an animated style, but I'm glad they did this. I think this is what I would prefer. If they did an animated style, I'd be down for it though, because I did love that cartoon. I think most people only consider the mainstream comic book heroes as the first superheroes. Uh, the ones that actually stood the test of time. There are countless, countless other superheroes from around this era and possibly predating them. In fact, I know predating them that nobody knows about. Only your super fanatic superhero encyclopedist knows about some of these heroes. In fact, Zorro is often considered one of the earliest American superheroes, starting, I believe, in 1919. I guess we'll go from right to left and start with Lothar. Now, as you can see, this guy is mean mugging. The sculpt on this dude is amazing. The paint apps are fantastic. I love the box art. He's just like, I'm going to punch you, brah. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> packaging's in, the packaging's a bit dinged up. Uh, I don't know how it got like that, but you know, I'm going to throw the packaging away anyway. Not a lot going on with the packaging here. We got the little character selection on the back. I already have Flash, Phantom, and Ming in my collection on my shelves. So let's see what Lothar is like. Let's see. Lothar, the strongest man on Earth. Wow, that's a very bold statement. His strength is a legend. His skill conquers all. One with his power, he will never fall. Lothar. Lothar is Mandrake's special assistant. He is also relied upon by the whole Defender team for his brilliant military genius. His specialty, plot strategy, and psychological warfare. This heavyweight champ is usually calm and cool until someone crosses his path. Then watch out because Lothar's fists can drive railroad spikes and the evil world shudders. That's actually pretty cool. Um, they really did amp him up in the Defenders cartoon. They made him uh, a very machine savvy, super intelligent, super powerful, uh, sort of like a Doc Sampson character maybe. Um, Doc Savage has <laughs> a bunch of really strong doctors in the comic books. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he's your super powerful engineer tactician. Uh, and they did a good job in the cartoon. It was kind of sad while I was looking up you know, the history on the character and saw just how <sighs> cliche and backwards they made this character for the time period. Very, very racially stereotyped and generic that he was... And when he started, he was very dumb. <laughs> dumb brute character who always dressed in, like, tight leotards and, and stuff like that. But he looks like a planeteer here, man. He, 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 you give this guy the uh, Earth ring. <laughs> he could probably beat up Captain Planet. And, you know, the, the colors on this package is very uh, Captain Planet. Oriented. NECA, get Captain Planet license, man. Give me some uh, Captain Planet figures. Like, yeah, that would be sweet. Do them hyper, hyper uh, stylized like this. Anyway, not a, not a lot else going on with the package, so let's go ahead and. Uh let's see. Yeah. Here we got Lothar. Take a look at that face sculpt, man. He is just so, so angry looking. Like he looks like he will. St <laughs> do you, do you want me to kiss you? I got a big kissable mouth. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> I really like this. 
Gosh, this sculpt is amazing. They did such a good job. They did such a good job. A little, a little emblem on his chest. It is a separate piece. It's glued on. Oh man, look, look at all the little pouches and pockets. He's got a little knife um, sheath there. Oh, like a whistle maybe. The collar. I'm glad that the vest is a softer, pliable plastic. Look at it wraps around to this amazingly sculpted backpack. I kind of wish the backpack was uh, removable, but it is attached to the vest. That's all right. He has a gold rope around his shoulder. He uses this a lot in the show, which is why they give him the accessory separate. Um, it is also attached to the vest. Man, he's got little elbow pads. What are they like permanently? Is it a permanently attached elbow pad to his elbow? How do you do that? Is it screwed in? Nice little wrist bracelets. This little bracelet right here is pretty cool. It's like got buttons on it. Got a pouch on his leg. So it's it's really cool to see this because a lot of these figures use the same body mold. Um, but it looks like they had to de do um, some retooling because the bodies are pretty much identical from Flash, Ming, Phantom, etc. And all the variants. Uh, they even used the, these bodies on uh, a couple DC figures like Green Lantern and Batman that they did a few years ago. He's got his little gun holster right here. It is a soft rubber, so that's not going to be an issue. Knee pads are painted very well. He's got a lot of stuff going on, like little buckles on his boots. They did not have to do any of this detailing. If they wanted to just do the animated style, they would have saved so much time. But NECA, NECA just, they they go big first, and then they follow through with, uh, you know, lighter stuff. Now, let's get a look at his articulation. NECA is kind of iffy with articulation sometimes, but it's been pretty good lately. Head rotation is pretty good. Got a waist swivel. Got a very tight ab crunch. That's really good. It's not too loose. It's not too tight. It goes back a little bit. Shoulders come out. Double jointed elbows. This is usually where I have the problem with the elbows and knees. They like to split sometimes. They just don't want to pose right. There you go. Takes a little uh, finagling, but it is a softer plastic. And then that mimics over to the other side. Hips are very tight. No looseness here. Got the thighs swivel right there. Double jointed knees. Like Super 7, come on. Take some pointers here. Boot swivel. Hinge. Rocker ankle. The toe, not very necessary. I don't care much for toe articulation, but they, they actually cut it pretty pretty well on this. They hit it pretty good with the uh, boot design. And of course, all this mimics over to the other side. This guy is, like, great. The first wave of figures had notorious stuck joint issues. Like, I saw countless reviews of people having breakage and paint sticking in all the joints and crevices. It was like little statues glued, glued, that were glued together. But uh, the, ever since that first wave, I haven't had any such thing or issue with any of uh, the figures from these lines. He stands okay. A little bit, little bit wonky. I like a lot with the... All of these figures, they, the ones that come with guns and blasters and stuff have these little laser effects. I love them. They're really cool. They're not practical for me and my shelf space, so I usually don't use them. But fortunately, they, fortunately, they give us these little tiny laser blast effects, and I use these all the time. These are, these are wonderful. And they give you these nice little painted blaster. I love that metallic. It's got like a 
dark wash finish on it. Very glittery. And this just effects just like stick on the front like that. Looks good. And of course you want a longer blast effect for dynamic range. It's pretty good too. Of course he has his two closed fists in the package. He comes with a left-handed trigger finger and a right-handed gripping hand. I wish they would have given him um, a right-handed uh, trigger. He also comes with this nifty little knife which actually will slot into the vest right here. I don't care for this kind of stuff. It's cool. But typically, if you try to force it, you're probably going to break the knife because NECA's uh, accessories are always kind of a cheaper plastic. But you want to just shove it in there. That's fine. Uh, I'm probably going to put it in a bag of the accessories so it doesn't get lost. And his go-to uh, accessory in the show was always this little grappling hook. He used this quite a bit. And this is actually a nifty little accessory there's a lot going on here but it does feel kind of flimsy I would be worried about it breaking so I wouldn't be actually trying to grapple your figure with this because the weight would just bend that little that slide and probably just break it over time it's more of just like for him to hold and have it for looks has this little uh, gold string which is actually pretty long that's about a good foot long piece of string so you could probably I don't know wrap it around his other shoulder if you wanted to in fact now that I think about it I think that I think that's what this is and I think it like he pulls it out and it grows bigger <laughs> I can't remember um, but it is interesting so he's got a nice little plethora of accessories let's go ahead and uh, See how this gun fits in this holster? It should fit really nicely. Yep. Clean, easy, nice fit. That soft rubber makes it very simple. It's not, <laughs> usually they it's a very firm rubber and you can't even use the holsters. But that's not an issue here. This figure is is is, is awesome. Uh, I really love it. The only issue I have right now is him wanting to stand. So let's see. I always use the blasters on these guys. Everybody who has, comes with a blaster gets a blaster. If he had a sword, he'd get it, he'd uh have a sword. Let's see. NECA, I usually have a hard time swapping out hands and stuff. Not so much this time. Came out pretty good. Went in pretty good. But. Put a little blaster effect. It is what it is. Swap out his other fist. You know. He is a punching character, so he's one of the few figures that I wouldn't have a problem just keeping a fist on. <clears throat> I want to see if this hand holds this knife. It actually holds the knife pretty good. you got to be careful trying to push it in there, though. That blade is kind of thin, and I almost bent it too far. I love these dynamic poses that these guys can get. NECA, really, gosh, you guys have just been killing it. Killing it and killing it with what y'all release. All right, next we're going to have a look here at Garrix, the ultimate evil robot. Now, Garrix, like I said, was originally created for the animated series. And the animated series aired in 86, so that makes him, what, 36, almost 37? That's a uh, pretty decent age. <laughs> I'm a little bit older than him. <laughs> but I love the box art. Got him, like, grasping out. The box art is just really great. That would make a really nice poster. So I'm looking at the paint here, and... It looks very animated, styled. Um, 
with the cell shaded crystalline look. He was sort of like a crystal robot. Uh, didn't make really any, any sense. Um, he had a bunch of uh, goons that looked very much like him, so I imagine that they'll probably at some point do a army builder set for this character. Um, says, Programmed by the wicked hand of Ming, Garrix is the most villainous robot in the galaxy. Evil leader of the Ice Robot Army, he alone has the capacity to alter and adapt strategy in the endless battle of heroes and villains. Okay, it's just a tactician robot. Nothing real special, but hey, I don't know, he's very 80s. <laughs> That's all I can say. This is a very 80s design. <laughs> Okay, he's very, he's very sleek looking. He really is. Get a look at that face. Very white, very blue, very red. He's very flat faced. Flat faced ice robot with crystalline features. There's a lot of hits of Deco here though. Like, uh,. You know, he's a very square sculpted character. So they you know, they didn't really have to put as much effort into this guy as they did the other ones. Um Your mileage may vary on how you like him. I think he's okay. Uh this like I said, this wasn't I wasn't gonna get this figure, um, because all I was interested in was the main cast of uh heroes. But you know, I didn't think he was that bad, so I figured I'd get him and see how I liked him. He's alright. Check out this articulation. Nice head rotation. This ab crunch is, uh, goes about that back, far back, and that forward, much forward. Waist swivel. Because of the squareness of his shoulders and stuff, the, the, elbow, the shoulders and elbows, or the shoulder doesn't really do much. The elbow wants to be stuck. <sighs> Double jointed elbows. I see little hands. I do like his hands. I like the um, square blue palette. Yep, the shoulders are about the only thing really limited so far. His hands are a softer plastic. Well, the whole thing's probably soft. Um, can't go far with the hips as you can see because of this uh, diaperish looking part it's, it's somewhat pliable uh, of course Garrick's I don't remember him doing a lot of dynamic things in the animated series double jointed knees rocker ankles he also has a toe cut. It is very stuck. That scares me. <laughs> oh. And then that mimics over to the other side. You can't even get a lot out of the... Uh, I mean, you can get enough, but not very much out of the uh, hip swivel. He is not the most dynamic character, and these toes, I'm going to just say this, just don't even bother trying to move the toes. You're going to, you're going to scratch that paint right there where the joint meets. It was, uh, they should have just kept him flat footed, but he looks okay. His feet, despite his feet being so flat. He also wants to have trouble standing. I don't know, I guess it's just they have weaker ankles. His ankles are definitely kind of weak. All right, comes with this big old arm cannon. It has a hole in the front for the, uh... all right. So this, this blast effect is for the cannon. 
as it has this little peg on the front. So you would just stick it in there like that. And you've got a cannon blast. That's pretty cool. I would have liked to have had a uh, shorter one for, for that. And then he has this, actually, this pretty nice looking laser pistol. I like that design. And of course, he comes with the big blast here, which doesn't fit very well on the front. It's kind of, they reused this from another figure, so it didn't really, the design wasn't really there. It, it holds in place well enough, but you gotta kind of push it on there. I would have liked to have seen a couple of these uh, short blast effects for it. Um, that's a shame. I would have rather had that than some of these extra hands. I am not sure what this is. I do not know. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Is it something particular? I don't know what this is. What is this? <laughs> what is this thing? Is it going to the communicator? I should know this. It looks like it has a, an engine here on the bottom. That's square. Which leads me to believe it goes in the hand somehow. But I can't really see any way. I don't know what this is. I might have to look this up. Alright, I just noticed something else. Look at the bottom of this arm cannon. It looks like the... the blaster <laughs> is supposed to somehow fit in this little cavity. And it's not really wanting to do it, but it's definitely intended to do that, like so. That's pretty cool. So you sort of like have a double blaster, but it just doesn't doesn't want to like snug up in there like it's designed to do. That's nifty. Uh, I don't know the purpose of it. Still know what this thing is. Maybe some of the comments knows. Time to fit in these hands and it doesn't seem too well. I, I, I'm fiddling with it. No idea. Is this it? Is that what that is? We don't like that? I still don't know. <laughs> is this, I think this might be an episode specific thing. I don't know what it is. I don't remember. So how would this arm cannon work? Let's see. I guess let's take the uh, hand off. The hand's kind of snug. Well, let's see. Maybe just put the arm. Maybe just put the arm cannon on his arm. I don't think that's right. I think he needs a fist on there. All right. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Got a little arm cannon. Last effect. Dual blast effects. That's interesting. He's pretty cool. He, only, he has these other two funny looking hands, which I can't really. It looks like you're just like menacing hands. I have no idea what this thing is. It's going to go in a bag. Open hand. And I like the pointing hand. Alright, that's Garrick's. He's pretty good. He's, not, he's about what I expected. Uh. I definitely wouldn't have bought him. <laughs> he'll be, he'll be all right though. He's not a bad figure, but he's just not something I would have wanted. All right, next up we have Mandrake. Mandrake is an all-powerful magician. He's Doctor Strange before Doctor Strange existed. Um, master of illusion. I guess he is an illusionist. I remember a lot of the spells and stuff he did in the show were illusion-based. Let's see, Mandrake the Magician, Master of Illusion, Master of Magic, Spells and Illusion, Enemies Crumble in Fear and Confusion, Mandrake. This dapper, sophisticated magician is more adept at hypnotic deception than anyone on Earth. Mandrake is the ultimate authority on anything involving magic or the supernatural. 
He is called upon by his fellow defenders to penetrate the enemy using his incredible powers of mental supremacy, deception, and the occult. Ooh. He's sort of like an anti-Ming. Ming is a very powerful sorcerer himself. Now, first off, his top hat is not removable. That's a big disappointment to me. I mean, it's not like I was going to display him without his top hat, but the option of having him hold it would have been great. I would have liked if they weren't going to make it removable that he at least had a separate head without a hat and a separate hat. But it, it does appear to be glued into place. He has this, uh, this wired cape. There's a wire running down the edge of it on this side and this side. Nothing here. This is uh, empty. And this is pretty cool. A lot of companies are doing this with the capes. It adds like this little flowy thing to it. They made him pop a little extra. Instead of just him being flat black, they give him this lovely little glistening coat of glitter over his suit, which makes him look just extra fabulous and magical. <laughs> That's actually a detail I'm glad they did. Now, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the way they designed the collar. Um, that face paint is really good. The sculpt is really good. Man, he just looks great. The paint apps are amazing. Like the flesh tones and how they blend. But his neck is a little bit long. Possibly because they had to design for the cape to fit underneath it. But the neck definitely sits pretty high. But, you know, he's a magician. Maybe he used a magic trick to do that. Now, these suited figures are always kind of wonky with articulation. Um, you can immediately tell off the bat with his elbows that they sacrificed some of the aesthetic of the suit to help him have more articulation. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but he's probably going to be posed in a certain type of way anyway where you don't notice. But his head articulation is pretty good. Not that great. For as long as his neck is, you'd think he'd be able to look up and down a little bit better. But, nope. That's pretty it. Pretty much it. Pretty much standard suit. The overcoat is glued into place on the front, which I don't think was necessary. Because, as you can tell from the coattails here, it is a very soft plastic. And I felt like they could have just left it unglued around the, the front here. But maybe they had problems with it lifting up and shipping. Um... Other than the glitter, his paint apps are very basic. His boots are kind of kind of sloppy. But, you know, you're not going to be staring at him that good, that much. Um, I love the details in the suit, the little folds and creases around, especially around the boot ankles. Look pretty good. Pretty, pretty generic. Pretty generic suit. Not the worst I have seen, though. For this price point, and, I, and we'll get to that eventually, but for this price point, this suit looks heads and tails above others I've seen of the similar ilk. Now, uh, articulation, there is no ab crunch. The suit is not sculpted for that. There is a somewhat swivel right here at the waist, and that's all you're going to get. The shoulders... They've kind of uh, tried to compensate for what they obviously knew was going to be an issue with the shoulders. So there is this like back and forth little socket swivel there as well as the hinge. Um, but it doesn't go very far up without forcing it. So that's I don't really like that. Now, the double-jointed elbows are kind of ugly. But NECA's kind of bad with elbows and, like, and knees. They're not really good with that. See, it doesn't look so bad if you got them like, bent up like that. You're not going to notice it. Wrist articulations. Got the swivel and hinge. 
And of course, it mirrors over to the other side. That did not sound good. I don't need my Mandrake breaking. I waited a long time to get him. Now, he's got fists on in the package, which I don't think are necessary. This hand looks like it's broken. It's very loose. I'm going to try to pull that off. Hopefully, it doesn't tear up. Of course, he's got some... He's got some thigh swivel. A little more than Garrick's, maybe. And he actually has got a pretty good hip rotation. He has a single jointed knee, which is not very common for NECA figures. They usually try to find a way to force a double joint in there, but it's definitely only a single joint. But that's okay, because you can get almost a 90 degree out of it. So that's pretty good. Um, anything with pant cuffs like this, the, sh the feet always tend to have some mobility issues. But they kind of figured out a way to curtail that. The toe articulation isn't bad and it is hidden pretty decently for what it is. Of course that mirrors over to the other side. Yeah, not too bad, not too shabby. And surprisingly he stands a lot better than both Lothar and Garrick's and had problems. Again he comes with another one of these blast effects like everybody in this line seems to come with. Um, the same pistol that every defender in the line has comes with his signature crystal topped magician staff a gripping hand a trigger hand a hand waving hand hi and of course his short blast effect. Of course it's the same thing with uh, this gun is with Lothar's. Fits on the effects like that. Pretty straightforward. A lot of these blast effects are the, actually the same color and the weapons are the same color as other figures released so it's gonna be easy if you've got multiple things to mix these up and you'll probably never know. This hand scared because it was acting like it was broken earlier. Uh, yeah, that one's kind of a uh, kind of messed up. But I'm going to give him his uh, yeah, that was kind of tight. I'm give him his one hand. And I'm going to swap out this fist. For his magic casting hand. So we're going to give him his staff. I feel like his staff could have been longer than this. But I'm not going to nitpick it. They could have made it longer. It should have been... I feel like it should have been this long. But I don't remember exactly how long it was. I'm sure there's a style guide they went after. There we go, we got my magician. Casting his spells of illusion. Now the scale on these guys is like most NECA stuff, it's a bit iffy. It's not gonna scale with some things and it's gonna scale great with others. And we can see that Garrett's is right around seven inches. And Lothar would be about six and a half standing straight and Mandrake is about seven to his top hat. This is about as close as I can get to something similar to Mandrake. This is Super 7's The Worst Bachelor, and he scales very well with him, and if you have this figure in your collection, he will look good next to Mandrake. Um, you might even can use some parts for customization because honestly, this guy was $55 plus shipping and, and stuff like that. He was 35, and that suit is heads and tails above bachelors in quality. Even the cape, even the every, like, it's just, he's a fun figure, don't get me wrong, I like this guy, but Mandrake puts him to shame in just about every 
respect, even articulation. So, paint apps. Ugh. Here's Marvel Legends, Eternals, Gilgamesh. You're not gonna. You're not gonna really scale a Marvel Legends very well with these guys either. I mean, it'll do okay, but its proportions are just a tad off. Here is uh, the Transformers Red Shockwave figure. Garrix is heads above him. Um, and he's also shorter than Mandrake. This has been a review and unboxing of Wave 2 of Defenders of the Earth featuring Manjek the Magician, Garax, and Lothar. I am UR Supreme Toys. Thank you so much for watching.